Thank you. 
As we gather, we take a moment to acknowledge the land upon which we gather, land that for generations, for thousands of years, was walked by First Nations peoples. We know from stories and and relationship with First Nations peoples the importance of the land as a part of their spiritual identity and lives. It's a relationship that we haven't always honored. And so as we light our candle of remembrance today, we offer up a prayer that we might find ways of living in right relationship with the land, with First Nations peoples, that we might live into a future where all might flourish. And so good morning. morning. And welcome, whether you're joining us here in person or whether you're online in your own time or in real time, welcome. Um, Some of you may have heard a story about an inexperienced preacher who'd been asked by a local funeral home to hold a graveside service for someone who had died without many friends or families. I was was reminded of this experience yesterday, or this story yesterday. Um, The minister was new in town, and he didn't really know the town very well. And so on the way to the cemetery, he got lost an awful lot. And by the time he showed up to the cemetery, he was about an hour late. And the hearse had already left, but there was the digger and the hole, and the workmen were kind of off having lunch by themselves. And he was feeling really badly at this point because he knew he was going to be the only person, and now even the funeral director was gone. So he went over to the hole, and he saw the vault was already closed, which just made him feel even worse. But he decided to give the funeral service of his life, and he sent off the deceased in grand style. And as he went back to his car, he overheard one of the workers saying, man, I've been installing septic systems for 30 years and I ain't never seen anything like that. (laughs) So there was no pomp or circumstance yesterday as the old furnace at the manse that had stopped working sometime in the night before Thursday left (laughs) and the new furnace was installed. No pomp and circumstance, but I can report that uh, the the furnace, there there is a functioning furnace at the manse again, and uh, there is warmth. (laughs) It's lovely. (laughs) Yes. Yes. I wondered uh, afterwards, I was like, well, maybe there should have been some kind of ceremony for the things at the manse, but uh, anyway. So welcome to our service today. Those of you I've, I've passed around, we have just learned a hymn. Many of you would have just sung uh, the hymn that we'll sing again later that, that proclaims there is water in the font. And of course, right now, there isn't water in the font. Um, I've, I've passed around the, the water that will be in the font. Um, we are not having an actual baptism today, but we will be taking the opportunity on this Baptism of Jesus Sunday to reflect a little bit on baptism and remember our own baptism. And I thought, since we haven't had a baptism yet, since I've been here, that I would introduce to you what I like to do in preparation for a baptism, and that is pass out the water. Um, It's a little cooler than I would normally start with because I wasn't worried about um, a, a baby. But, um, but invite 
you or many of you to take part in this act of baptism, this act of welcoming into community by passing out the water in little glasses that I invite you to hold for this first part of the service until we get, um, it's around the prayer of confession sort of into the children's time just so you know when um, or how long you're gonna be holding on to that. Um, but if you wanna hold on to the glass of water and, and warm it with your, your hands, with your heartbeat, um, if we had a child here, um, it would be also a, a chance to sort of offer your own blessings and, 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 and reflections on to, to that water before we, we would gather it into the font and do a baptism, um, just so folks are aware of, of what's going to be happening in the service. But um, as we take this opportunity to come into worship, we light a second candle, and that's our Christ candle a candle that in this season after Epiphany, these, these weeks following Christmas, we light the Christ candle, remembering the star that led the wise men to the Christ child. May our light shine through as a beacon of hope in our world. And so let us come into worship in song, and we're going to sing, Come All You People. John the baptizer, with all the disciples, with our sisters, brothers, and siblings throughout the ages, we gather to sing, to pray, to worship our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And let us pray. Our opening prayer is also responsive. Holy God, on this day when we share the story of the baptism of Jesus, you once again call us to gather on the banks of the River Jordan. May we, like John the Baptist, be willing to follow Jesus into the living waters. May we, like John the Baptist, humbly answer your call to serve. May we, like Jesus, receive your declaration of love. May we delight in the renewing waters of baptism as we recall Jesus' baptism. Amen. Our opening hymn is Crashing Waters at Creation. We all do and say things we later come to regret. 
Our, chance, our prayer of confession is a chance to reflect on places in life where we carry brokenness and regret. And so let us pray, enter into this time of reflection and prayer. You invite us into a mindset of hope. Hope flowing through our neighborhoods, hope flowing into our world, and yet so often we thwart that hope or hold it close in our hearts, not willing to let it thrive and live in the world. May we find ways of unlocking the shuttered doors of our hearts. Remind us that at our baptism, you touch us with the waters of life, promise to be always with us, and call us your beloved. As we open our hearts in the silence of this moment, And so as we lift up our heads and our hearts, may we be reminded of the good news that God has proclaimed to all of us, that we are called to let go of the past, to walk hand in hand with the Spirit into the reign of God. We are forgiven, accepted, sent forth to do good. Thanks be to God. Amen. As I explained at the beginning. This is at the time where we we are going to create the font together. We're going to do so while singing, and I think I'll invite us to stand um, for for the singing of um, Out of Deep Unordered Water um, as we take the unordered water and, and form the font together. Know that there are three verses and I think 20 glasses of water spread out a monk. So um, just, just saying, you don't have to come up right in the first moment, but um, yeah, that there, are, there are three verses, and, and that together through the singing of this, we'll, we'll create the font together.
And so often, if we were having a baptism, I would invite the younger folks who are present to, to come closer. I don't know, Charlie and Leo, if you want to come up to the font now, or if you want to stay there, it's, it's up to you guys. Because I thought we'd just talk, I don't even know, have, have you guys ever been to a baptism before? Yeah. No? Their own? <laughs> I know, most of us don't remember our baptism, because we're often... We're often really little when we get baptized. And I just thought, because I know it's been, it's been a while, actually, since I've been to a baptism, too, but, but, um, but maybe there are some people here who, who, who wouldn't remember ever having been to a baptism. What, what we do when we baptize someone? Well, what do we do when we baptize someone? Put the water on their forehead. Mark the cross. Yeah. Yeah, we put water on their forehead, and there are, there are words that we say when we baptize someone. We baptize, we often end up sort of pouring water three times or sort of one really long time while we, while we baptize with three sort of, um, they're not petitions, they're not, they're three sort of statements um, in, in the name of, of God, but we use a Trinitarian formula for that. Um, Unlike many times in the church when we use a Trinitarian formula in the United Church and across many denominations that have um, an ecumenical agreement about baptism, we do use uh, the, very, the traditional, I don't want to say the traditional because I, I don't know when I'm saying the traditional how far back tradition I'm going, but we do baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, I will often then sort of unpack that a little bit in the name of God, source of love, the name of Jesus, love incarnate, the the Holy Spirit loves power. But the actual act of baptism, because of our ecumenical agreement with um, the Reformed and Methodist churches, so so like Presbyterians and Anglicans and Lutherans and uh, Catholics and... um, Um, a lot of different churches, we have an ecumenical agreement so that we're only baptized once. So when we say, I know I often hear it, and I've said it before too, as someone who has grown up in two different denominations um, across my childhood, sort of a foot in the United Church and a foot in the Lutheran Church, um, I I try to be careful with how I word it, but it often ends up sounding like I'm saying I was baptized into the United Church and confirmed into the Lutheran Church. Well, we're, we're, we're not actually baptized into the United Church. We're baptized into the, the wider church, the church family, which is why if, if, if one of us were to change denominations and go into one of those other denominations within our agreement, we don't get re-baptized. We, we, we recognize that the baptisms in, in, in these various denominations um, and yes, that does, that does keep us. And in the United Church, where we've tended to expand our language in a lot of places, baptism is one place where we do come back to that Trinitarian formula for the actual act of baptism. And so I thought I'd just yeah, remind us of, of, of that today. Um, and uh, yeah, we would... Well, we could actually do it. I mean, in our, in our worship class, we, we brought in our... And, and we... There are churches that, that do more full immersion or would go outside to a stream, but, but we're usually at the font and, and don't, um, don't use so much water that it goes down their faces or anything, but just try and put it on their heads so that it's, yeah. So hopefully you'll get a chance to see a baptism at some point. And uh, our way of, of welcoming someone into the church, into the, into the wider church family, even if we don't, most of us don't really remember our own. Now, some people here might because, because United Church baptizes people at any age and some people who are baptized in different denominations. Does anyone remember their baptism? Yeah, a number of people here remember their baptism. And we'll have to sometime, maybe on this Sunday or another Sunday, we should... I blew out the Christ candle somehow. Or the fan did. Anyway, sorry. Um, <laughs> One of these days, maybe we'll have a chance where we could share the stories of our baptism or or how we came for those of us who who remember ours, because like like those of you who didn't put up your hand, 
I also was baptized as a baby, so I don't, I don't remember my own, but a chance to reflect. So I think you folks are going to head downstairs. Um, Debbie told me who you were going to go with, and I don't, oh, that's right, Francis Six. Um, can I have one of you come forward and get our candle? Light up the And we, probably no surprise here, are going to prepare to hear the story of Jesus' baptism. Who baptized Jesus? John. Yeah, John the baptism, or John the baptizer, rather. Um, a story that's uncontested in, across the, the gospel stories, or gospel accounts, that Jesus was baptized by John. Um, when scholars are looking at the gospel text and looking at different versions of texts and stories and, and kind of trying to, to suss out maybe which, especially if there are differences in a story, like which one might be more the older story or more authentic, there are various criteria they use. The baptism of Jesus by John the baptizer is, is thought to probably most definitely have happened why? Because it's kind of, well, if you think about it, it's almost an uncomfortable story for the early church. Like, we have Jesus, and yet he is being baptized by John the baptizer. If, if a story were ever going to have been sort of modified or changed or tweaked to, to um, that's sort of a detail that might have been one that might have gotten changed or tweaked, and yet... And yet all of the gospel accounts are consistent that, that Jesus came to John. Matthew is interested in his account and, and sort of recognizes this potential uncomfortableness that the early church might have had with the fact that Jesus would have gone to John to be baptized by, putting, by making it, um, in his account, John, as we're going to hear in our reading, John tries to deflect it, tries to get out of it, tries to say, no, no, like, I shouldn't be baptizing you. Like, the, the, the sort of names that conflict that, that the early Christian church probably had with this story as they, as they grappled with, with this story. And we're going to explore it a little bit in the reflection, but I invite Gail. There you are. <laughs> Thank you. Reading from Matthew 3, verses 13 to 17, the baptism of Jesus. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. And then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love, with whom I am well pleased.
shine again. I think, I don't know if it's because it, the candle's almost, there's no wax right around it, so maybe that's why. Oh, that is why. Ah, oh, there is. Perfect. Yeah, I kind of feel like we should have our, our light shining. Not being blown out. I'm going to I'm going to stay over here with the water. Let us pray. May our thoughts, our words, our deeds always be rooted in your love, gracious God. Amen. I'm often reminded of my worship prof, Bill Curvin, when I come to the font, to prepare to pour water or show water. Use lots of water, he would say. If you're going to use water, make sure they get wet. <laughs> or at least can hear it, can see it. One of the, another one of those, well, I've said oftentimes that we don't engage our other senses enough to, to see and to hear the water engages another part of our ourselves when we're gathering at the font. I did bring my clippers with me to the church today, um, hoping that en route from the manse to here, I would pass a Christmas tree out on the end of someone's driveway so that I could nab a branch to, um, to use, but I, uh, I didn't. Um, but did you know that there, there is a term for, for like sprinkling water with that? Does anyone know what that term is? I know I became familiar with it. It's called a spurgis. Um, I learned the term when I was teaching Sunday school at Church of the Holy Trinity, um, a progressive Anglican church down beside the Eaton Center in downtown Toronto. If you've been to the Eaton Center, there's, there's a church that's almost attached to it with a labyrinth outside. Um, Really neat, really neat congregation. Um, but every week before communion, which they did in the round, um, so the whole congregation would join in a circle around the communion table, the, the minister had a little brass pail of water and a little brass sort of wand with a little knob on the end and would, would sort of sprinkle around the, the congregation. And I looked into it that year. It was my final year at Emmanuel, so I was, I was going to be ordained at the end of the year. And I really liked that. The, I wanted to know what it was and learn that it was an Aspergis wand and, and used for Aspergis. Um, the, the, the reason I, I didn't end up pursuing it was I've seen so many conductors throw their batons <laughs> that there was always, I mean, I, I really, I liked the, the action, and, and I, I have used tree branches before, and, and I don't have one today, but don't worry, there, there will be tree branches in the future, and, and aspergis. Um, here, like in many United Churches, our baptismal font 
tends to kind of live off to the side most Sundays. Um, it's not in use. That's, um, I mean, in some churches, especially if it's built in, it might be a little bit more prominent, but often we have it sort of tucked away. Um, and I know if, if you've visited other churches, maybe you can picture in other churches places where a baptismal font is a little bit more front and center. Um, I know the Lutheran, that Lutheran church, that the one that I was confirmed in, um, the tradition, uh, the, at that church, the baptismal font was actually kind of right about here. It was in the center at the front, and, and as a Lutheran church that had communion every week, people would come forward and, and go to the, the communion rail behind them and would walk past the font every week. And I remember reflecting for a paper I wrote while I was at Emmanuel how that, that connection, the, the interesting connection between baptism and communion that we have in our, in our creeds and, and in some ways in our theology, but we don't often sort of enact in our physical space in the same way. And, and how I thought it was, it was, it seemed like a revelation to me. I, I found out, well, it really wasn't that much of a revelation, but that idea of sort of walking through baptism or walking past the font on the way to communion and, and that deep connection. Um, was something to think about in, in terms of, of reflecting on spaces. A Sunday to remember our own baptisms, which of course, as I, I said earlier, many of us don't necessarily remember a symbolic remembering of its meaning, sometimes with that physical aspect of the sprinkling of water. Um, Oh, I meant to include, oh, I, I, I didn't mention before, like, like a, spur, a spurgis, the, the sprinkling of water. Um, there's another word that I just learned a couple years ago, actually, associated with baptism, that act of what we actually do in baptism of pouring water over the head. There, there's a special name for that. Anyone familiar with it? A fusion. Learned that a couple years ago. A fusion, either, either with the hand or, or sometimes with a shell. Um, a way of, of, of pouring water. Thinking of that phrase, remember your baptism. What does it mean to remember our baptism? Something we're called to do each year on this Sunday as we hear the story of Jesus' baptism, or on Sundays when we're having a baptism. A story that's a beginning, not an ending. It's not the arrival point. On Christmas Eve, I reminded us that Christmas is not the end of the Christmas season, but is the beginning of the Christmas season. Likewise, baptism. I think some of our language does us a bit of a disservice sometimes when it comes to baptizing. Like I've I, I'm sure I'm not alone in having heard people refer to, you know, getting, getting the kids done um, and, and trying to, to move away from that idea of not getting baptized to be done and never set foot in a church again. But baptism is a symbolic ritual of beginning a journey, beginning a relationship, a relationship in community, a relationship rooted in God. Jesus' baptism, in some ways, is his stepping into his role. In all of the gospel stories, Jesus' baptism and, and his experience in his baptism is his stepping into his mission and beginning his ministry. Remembering our baptism can be a means of recommitting to our own ministry and mission. Taking a look at our hearts and our minds and reorienting them towards God, towards love, towards community, and remembering whose we are. As our anthem sang, let our light shine, not let it get blown out or the, or the, the lack of wax, <laughs> blow it out, but, but to let our light shine, a reminder to let that light shine. It can be so easy to forget, to let ourselves be burdened and weighed down, to forget our worth, our value, our belovedness. 
on this Sunday where we remember Jesus' baptism as we remember our own baptism, may it be an invitation for us to remember whose we are and who we are as we recommit our hearts and minds to a path of love. And so in closing, I I want to share the portion on baptism from um, a song of faith, the the faith statement put out in 2006 by, by the United Church the uh, very poetic faith statement. In grateful response to God's abundant love, we bear in mind our integral connection to the earth and to one another. We participate in God's work of healing and mending creation. To point to the presence of the holy in the world, the church receives, consecrates, and shares visible signs of the grace of God. In company with the churches of the Reformed and Methodist traditions, we celebrate two sacraments of gifts of Christ, baptism and Holy Communion. In these sacraments, the ordinary things of life, water, bread, wine, point beyond themselves to God and God's love, teaching us to be alert to the sacred in the midst of life. Before conscious thought or action on our part, we are born into the brokenness of this world. Before conscious thought or action on our part, we are surrounded by God's redeeming love. Baptism by water in the name of the Holy Trinity is the means by which we are received at any age into the covenanted community of the church. It is the ritual that signifies our rebirth in faith and cleansing by the power of God. Baptism signifies the nurturing, sustaining, and transforming power of God's love and our grateful response to that grace. Amen. many ways that we support the life and work of being the church together and our offering is one such way while we don't pass the plates at this time we will take a moment to reflect on how we can continue to contribute to the life and work of this congregation and church family as we bring the plate forward and offer a blessing
Let us pray. With these gifts, loving God, we present also ourselves and our varied ministries. May each of us be a part of your answer to the cries of the world. Amen. And so we come to a time now of sharing our, our joys and our concerns. We will be um, including uh, a dedication piece to um, dedicating our, our hymn books. But are there other things to share? What are we celebrating? Having heat again. I've got one. <laughs> we can think of Doris heading out today on her long Yes, long yes, yes. Yeah, Nancy. I just want to um, bring you, I guess, to celebrate the Christmas of the baby Laura. Uh, the parents of Dora, who was July 6th, at the Christmas Eve thing, I was brought by his mansion and kept for the shelter. I spoke to the dad yesterday. Um, I wasn't quite up to date last week on her birth weight, but she's up to four and a half pounds. And tomorrow, um, they go to Hamilton for some. Thank you for updating us. By the way, Miss Meg, the set, the doll that you had for the basket of um, stories was probably about the size that she was born. <laughs> so yeah, and, uh, or I even bigger. Other things to, yeah. Okay. We need to remember and celebrate Freddie's life. He was a big part of our lives here in town. Our driver had a tractor, bringing us vegetables and whatever we needed. He was there for everybody. And his celebration was yesterday, and um, we were all blessed to have him as our friend. What was his last name? You said Freddie. His last name. Other, other thing. Yeah. Um, I have a. Well, I didn't have it. Well, my friends are a, a great friend, baby, a girl. Her name is Addison, and uh, she was nine pounds five ounces. <laughs> and I got to see her. We got to see her yesterday. When was she born? Oh, okay, nice. Wow. Anything else to celebrate? Yeah. It was in the news that we welcomed a new great grandson. Oh, yes. I was going to say, I remember there was another. And our second great grandson, his brother is Harrison. He'll be two in February. This one's named Franklin Charles Panboy. He was seven pounds, four ounces. 21 inches, but he was three weeks old. So a couple of great grandbabies to, yeah. to celebrate this week. Anything else to name? And so let us pray. I mean, and gracious God, we give thanks for the many blessings of life, for, for families and, and loved ones, for... The, the celebrations that, that bring us together in this new year. We give thanks and celebrate births, great grandbabies, a great granddaughter and great grandson that, that we've heard uh, born over the last week or two. We give thanks for baby Nora as she continues to grow and, and gain weight. We we think of, of friends and, and loved ones who are, are traveling uh, as Doris makes her way to Australia and 
hope that she has a, a safe and wonderful visit with family. We recognize that there are many things for which we give thanks, but we also recognize that we carry concerns on our hearts. And, and some, sometimes those concerns are mixed with celebration as we, as we hear of, of the life of, of Freddie who was celebrated yesterday um, and the part he played in, in this community. We also recognize that there are people we know who are, are struggling, who are ill, who feel alone. It's been a bit of a difficult week, loving God, and I know that I'm not alone in, in, in finding that the weather can influence emotions, and, and this, this, this week of, of gray skies has, has been tough for some, some folks. And so we offer up our prayers of concern. We take a moment also and, and give thanks. Give thanks for the, the offerings and memories, both uh, the, the, those people who have been remembered with a, a dedication um, as we dedicate these, these new copies of, of More Voices for the use of, of our congregation that we might continue to sing and make music together. We remember those people who are named in the covers of these books, people who are, are being honored, who are still with us, but are being honored by having a book in, in their honor, and those people who we miss that are named. And so we pray that these books might go to good use that we might continue to sing and praise together. And so we lift up all of our prayers, the prayers that we voiced aloud, but also those we carry too deep for words, trusting in your presence with us always. And so may we join generations before us in praying the prayer Jesus taught his disciples to say in whatever language or version is most familiar and comfortable to you, one common version is found on the screen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn, A Little Child the Savior Came. Thank you.
we go forth from this place, may we go to follow the love of God, to be surprised by God's wonder, to lift up our voices for love and compassion. May we feel God's encouragement to be a blessing as we offer blessings with our heart and hands and and continue to let our light shine. And as after we've sung our parting song and I extinguish the candle and the smoke rises up, I invite you to imagine breathing that light in that we might bring that light with us into the world. Amen. Mm